Okay, so I've started off by coloring in the background with a green ink tense uh, pencil. This might seem kind of weird when you see the end result because it's a pink magenta color, but what I like to do is start with the complementary color in order to get my shadows um, better defined in the piece. So instead of using black or just a darker color of magenta in order to get my shadowed areas, I'll start with the complementary color and then go over top with the magenta. And then if I need to de deepen the shadowed areas, I'll put another layer of the complementary color, the green color, and then uh, mix in some more of the magenta and just kind of build up my shadowed areas like that. Now you'll notice as I'm painting that narrow strip at the top, when it dries, there will be this little circle splotch type thing right above the cat's arm. And I believe that's just from using too much water or it may even just be the process of putting water on top of another layer. With ink tents, they say that when you or you can put it you can put down a layer let it dry and then put another layer on top and it won't disturb the layers underneath but I find that that's not necessarily the case all the time like yes for the most part it, it seems to be fine but sometimes I'll get little splotchy areas and then I just have to go over it with more color and you'll see me do that later so starting in on the cat I've used a black ink tense pencil. It, it's either black or like ivory black, one of the less black ones. Um, and I do this just to define my dark areas and keep track of where I am with the, with the fur pattern. It gets really complicated and if I don't have that dark um, pattern down first, then I tend to lose where I am and I just, yeah. So I put the dark down first and then I'll go on top with the other base colors and then I'll go on top of that with some more detail. And when I'm building up the black color, even if I start with black, I'll go over top with some blues or, um, well, blues as well as a dark red or even a dark green. Like I'll, I'll mix a lot of those dark colors in together just to make a nice rich uh, black tone. If you leave it just straight black, it just, it looks really flat and I don't know, it, it just, it doesn't look quite right. So you always have to either build up your black by using other colors like a dark red a dark blue and a dark green or um, layer those colors over top of a black color that you've laid down. So now that I have the dark areas defined, then I'm going over that with um, the oak colored ink tents. And that's just to get a, a base color in and get rid of all the, the white because this is actually a, a quite a dark colored cat so I don't want to have any white showing through where there shouldn't be any white. Um, yeah, so I get the oak down first and I bring in some reddish tones in the belly and then I decide that the whole thing looks too purple so I glaze over the, the background with a more pink tone. And you can see as it dries, the, the color does change a little bit. So that's something to watch out for when just when you're putting the color down, it is going to change a little bit. So wait until it dries before you keep messing with it. And um, if you're doing a, a large area of a solid color, you also want to be careful about how you use your brush. So if you're using a flat brush, you want to go in very even strokes. Um, I did try to use a mop brush to soften out the color, but that didn't really work as well as I thought it would. So it, it's just a matter of using nice even strokes to make sure that the color remains even. 
So here I'm darkening up the shadows by using a bit of, that must be a dark blue color, and um, probably some red and green. I don't know, it was a long time ago when I actually did this picture, so it's hard to tell which colors I'm actually using. But yeah, so I just build up that shadow even more by adding more red, adding more blue, adding more green. And then I come over top of that with the pencils just to better define the details. And now I'm starting to get into the, the actual detail work of the fur. So I'm going to be using the paintbrush a little bit less. I'll bring it in every now and then just to deepen the color a little bit. But I don't want to smudge the color too much. So the rest of this will be mostly just pencil work. And I'm using quite a few different colors. I'm using a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, um, a little bit of uh, like a dusty orange color. I don't remember what the name of the color is. And really, I mean, if you're if you're doing your own work, it doesn't really matter exactly what color you're using, um, as long as you get a general idea and you test it out first and and see what colors look best in what combinations then it doesn't matter what kind of blue you're using um and yeah it doesn't have to be exact you can still make something look really good without having specific exact colors um and just a note this part looks really dark here it, it's just that it was a sunny day and i thought that it would be bright enough to not have the lamp on but it just made the picture look really dark so yeah, I come on top after to just pick out a few little white hairs in the fur and do the whiskers. And that's about it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.